here with us on the Singer Success Path podcast, where we talk about all the things building a career with our voices without having to set foot on a stage. I'm Kimara Morell. Today, I sat down with John Kleinbell and Sonnet Simmons, founders of the Two Indie Sync Licensing Community. They are both incredible artists with hundreds of placements between the two of them, and they are shouting from the rooftops what Sync has done for their lives. John and Sonnet have taken on the mission to help other artists get their music licensed to have financial success and live fulfilling lives. Have a listen. At SSP, we really put the spotlight on revenue streams that do not require us to perform live. I can Mm. be a little biased because I don't do that, but I know the two of you have a great history of performing live. So I was just wondering how did adding remote music work like change things for you? And is it as fulfilling as the stage to you? Hmm. Really good questions. Um, I mean, it just opens you up to more opportunity to be able to take it from putting together a band, putting like figuring out what, you know, rehearsal space we're going to do, what shows we're going to do, or just, you know, whatever it might, the, the live experience might be being hired by a band, singing with a band, you know, all the things that come with that. Um, having virtual space, you have time to have the flexibility with your family. I, I have found that like, I don't want to do late nights anymore. I don't want to mm. wear heels and I don't want to do late nights. So for me, I kind of like, oh, this is great. I mean, I, I love singing for people. I love singing live, you know, but I don't want to do that every night. I just, I'm done with that lifestyle. And so it's really nice to be able to get on my mic or work remotely with people. I I mean, getting together in the room, songwriting together in a room, there's no replacement for that. I love that Mm. um, still, but you can do that in working hours. It doesn't have to be like 11 PM and people are just rolling into the studio now. Like that has always bothered me and it will forever bother me. Like I'm not a night yeah. <laughs> I just, I just, we just had daylight savings a few days ago um, what, as, as we're filming this. And I just, it hit me so hard how much I love the freaking sunlight. And yeah, I want to go to bed at like 9 p.m. and make sure I'm up to maximize all the sunlight hours. I can. <laughs> the same, the same. I'm you so two grateful. are uh, totally on a different plan than I am. That's all I got to say. <laughs> You're <laughs> no, a night owl, I, huh, John? Well, I was up goodness. late. Because I can I was text a- you any hour and I'm like, oh, <laughs> pretty John's much, awake. Yeah. <laughs> except morning, but night. Uh, yeah, awake. I burned both ends of the candle pretty, pretty well. And uh, I was out singing karaoke last night and it was the first <laughs> time that I'd gotten up in front of people and sang something in quite some time. And it made me think to myself, mm. oh, man, I miss this. Like, mm-hmm. and there's no replacing like singing up on a stage in front of people that are paying attention to you and you're giving it your all and you're you're getting into it so I, I really do miss that but I do think that it's just it can be just as fun for me to hop in just earlier today I was in the ISO Vox here you know mm-hmm. pretending I was in an arena singing Imagine Dragons kind of stuff and it's like mm. you know you can you, if you use your imagination you're not missing out but you are missing on that human connection aspect of it yeah. uh, mm-hmm. but there's plenty of ways fortunately in the music industry, like Sonnet talked about, you hop into a room of writers, you still get that personal connection with the music yeah. and you're not missing out. Like, unless that's really the lifestyle you want, you want to be touring all the time. You want to be, you know, yeah. doing artist interviews and hustling for every single waking day, uh, every waking minute of your day. Um, that's just not really the path that appeals to me. Do at you this feel point that? Do you feel that things have become a lot easier since you've slowed down the performing life, you know, the performing lifestyle? I don't know if it was easier. Uh, I think it was totally different, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. Like, because when I stopped performing, it was because I wanted to learn how to produce music. And Mm -hmm. so that was an entirely different rabbit hole to start jumping into and learning about and and to make your mistakes in and and to be really actually, you know, it was very humbling for me because it yeah. was like all of a sudden I was a I was a pretty good performer. And then all of a sudden I was like a terrible producer, like and I have to start oh, completely I would all be over. The, I would be the was, opposite. I would be great in the booth, <laughs> terrible on stage. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I guess we just want like a dynamic life with with all sorts of diverse experiences so if we can just go do karaoke once a month then we might be fulfilled (laughs) 
I think that's definitely something I'm going to be doing. Maybe that's forward. the life hack. Was, Just go sing karaoke. <laughs> Actually, that's the fr- what I did to make friends when I first moved to L.A. Like in oh, my late yeah. 20s, I was hitting up all the karaoke bars. I knew all the KJs on the West Side and we were singing like more than words and, you know, d- duets on that kind of stuff. And I was hearing uh, Dion Warwick's son mm-hmm. singing Hotel California at the Whaler at like 11 o'clock at night. And it was just freaking crazy. Like, it was oh, fun. Those Whaler. were those were great <laughs> memories uh, back mm-hmm. when I was in L.A. Yeah. Well, I know you have some pretty epic sync placements between the two of you. I was curious. If you could share a little bit about which one maybe comes to mind that had the biggest impact on you. Like, how did it feel to hear and to see your song on TV or wherever? What was that moment like for you? I feel like I've been talking like the whole freaking time, <laughs> but I'll go uh, because it's very clear to me which well, one. We were I mean, just talking it, about this the other day, this story. So go ahead. Yeah. I mean, I think about this story and it's one of those things that keeps refueling me in terms of sync because I get in a way I get the same kind of shot from every single placement that I get when I, I, I just, I'm a little bit like a kid when it comes to this. It's like, I see something that I had something to do with on TV and all of a sudden I turned to like a 12 year old and I'm like, F yeah, totally. you know? Uh, but the very first placement that I ever got, I had submitted my songs to an agency. They started pitching stuff. And then like a month into it, they pick up the phone and they're saying stuff like international spot, Starbucks, two thirds of a year, they're going to be running the ads. It's going to be worldwide. Mm -hmm. And I was, it it all just didn't make any sense to me. There was a pretty hefty amount of money that was involved with it too, which was pretty exciting. But in terms of how it all like kind of settled in, obviously I was very excited at the time. I was calling everybody, calling my family, calling my friends, the people I collaborated with all that stuff, but it didn't really sink into me. I was going to visit my family in Arizona and I was driving that long stretch of freeway that you drive uh, on the 10 when you're going from LA to Phoenix uh-huh. and on the kind of the, the border of California and Arizona, there's this big truck stop. And so I pull in there and I'm, I don't know what I was doing. I think I was filling up a soda and you know how in those big truck stop, like convenience store kind of setups, yeah. they'll have like the little arcade that's in the corner and they've got like a TV <laughs> yeah. up there. And all of a sudden I hear my voice and I'm like, it's just like, you're, where's this coming from? And, and I look over to the side of it and I'm like, that's me. <laughs> I just literally like almost don't drop my drink. Like I'm like, ah, and I walk over to the TV. It's only like a 15 second spot, but I'm like singing pretty much the whole time on it. And you oh, realize, nice. I think Kamara, it really sunk into me at that moment that this was something that millions of people were hearing and seeing. And it really made me instantly kind of feel like I checked off one of those goals that I had when I originally picked up a guitar to write something or to, to learn some covers. It was like, I want to, I want everybody to hear my voice. I want like, I want to, I want to make something that is a, it adds to the fabric of our culture and in, in its own way, it, I accomplished that. And so in a way, everything that I do after this point is gravy and it makes the whole thing a lot more fun. Uh, but you don't have to have that kind of thing happen to you in order to contribute to the music industry. Just for me, it was like something that really hit me in a fun way. Yeah. And it's one of those things when I'm having a rough day or something like that, I always think back to these kinds of memories because they, they're they one yeah. of the things that recharge my batteries when I'm kind of on the fence about like, oh, it's just like, do I want to make another one of these or do I <laughs> ah, it's like I haven't well, gotten something in a little while you know it's because that happens too there's ups and downs with it totally but like now that I I'm so lucky to be your friend and, and looking back on on what you've done since then I feel like you couldn't have received a louder message from the universe to say yes John sync licensing yeah. go this way and yeah. look what you've done now you and Sonnen have created two indie which is uh, it's changed my life by the way uh, how did I meet John and Sonnet? I took their course in 2020 and it changed everything. I, I, you had such a big impact on me. And so I'm glad you got that massive placement because it kept you going down that road where now you are teaching other people how to do it. And it's, it's so, it's such a big deal. And, and we thank you for, for being part of our journey. How about you, Sonnet? Do you have any, any good stories for us? I was going to think about the the overstock ad that I did uh, a number of years ago. It's a long time ago, but just in terms of um, 
they came to me and asked me if I would write a song for them. So I wrote the song. I guess it wasn't one of my songs being licensed. I wrote the song and was also filmed on camera for the spots. Um, so it was like a series of five commercials with me singing live the song. Wow. Um, yeah, it was really unreal and so unreal that like, I don't think I ever really was like, took it in, you know, these, these things where you're, you're like, mm -hmm. well, this isn't what success looks like, you know, success is going to look like me on a stage, like Beyonce, like all this, you know, so this happened and I was like, oh, well, this is cool, but it's not success. So while it was happening, I feel like I was a little bit checked out of how amazing it was that this was going on, you know, like I couldn't really take mm -hmm. it all in. And um, I think now the work I do is really to help independent artists, like take that control of their career, show up, be present and really make decisions that are going to help them lead them to like how success can look so many different ways. And I feel really fortunate to have had a lot of placements and to keep writing music with amazing people to have, to have that. But that was one of my first placements. And I had, I was really green. I didn't really know. And I'm, I feel, I guess, grateful for that experience. Yeah but it also was a huge trajectory change for me of like, totally. wait a second, like wake up Sonnet. Like this is a big deal. Wake up, yeah. you know? And it, it was what a big wake up call for me of all yeah. the options that are out there. I think we all have our almost, you know, a parallel story to that where we, we thought we knew what exactly, you know, what it was going to look like, what outfit we were going to be wearing on stage, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's just, just life doesn't happen that way. It doesn't. It <laughs> God really laughs doesn't. when we make plans, but yeah, you know, so yeah, same with me. When I finally got that $250 check to do a demo singing gig, I was like, wait a minute, this is, this is money. I've never made money with singing. <laughs> and yeah. I've been, what have I been doing for 10 years? <laughs> totally. Like maybe totally. we should follow this. Totally. Well, I, I was curious, can you give us a little bit of the backstory? Uh, like, what were the breadcrumbs that led you to creating the 2 indie community? Well, it's an interesting question. So Sonnet and I taught for an amazing woman named Kathy Heller for a couple of years uh, through her organization, Catch the Moon. Mm -hmm. And we had the privilege and the pleasure of helping mentor thousands of students as different singers, songwriters, producers teach them the fundamentals of sync, connect them with opportunities, real opportunities with agencies, with supervisors. And it was just a, an amazing journey that we were a big part of. And that company uh, in a way closed because Kathy Heller started a podcast called Don't Keep Your Day Job that really just kind of took off. And uh, she decided she didn't want to focus on music anymore. And when that happened, the teaching that we were doing, the mentorship, the ongoing mentorship that we were doing was about to end. And Sonnet and I, we just sidebarred and we were just like, do we want to keep doing this? Because I, I really enjoy this. It's so rewarding. I love mentoring people. I love seeing, you know, that experience that I had when I got my first placement. I get just as much joy when I see people jumping up and down and recording the the, the crappy videos of like the, the placement that's showing live on the TV. Like I've seen so many of those and it just makes me so happy because I know what they're feeling when they're hitting that record oh, yeah. button. And Actually, so that was one of my questions is, do you have any specific stories that really just hit you? Um, any success stories that from your students? That really oh, certainly there's one that I would love to talk about. But one thing that uh, I, I definitely wanted to I didn't want to leave that last question oh. about like how two indie formed like just completely. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know. I feel like we should answer that because it's uh, it's son and I love what we do with two indie. Uh, we got Kathy's blessing to start our own company. And mm. that's what we've done. We just decided we wanted to continue teaching. We wanted to continue building community. And we also wanted to start doing some other things that we weren't necessarily doing when we were teaching with Catch the Moon. And that's the fun thing about owning your own business is you get to make those decisions. You get to create yeah. the kind of community that you want. And uh, not to say that the ethos of the two communities were really that different in a way, uh, but obviously we're different people and we get to 
run the rules, create what we want to create. And it's just been a really wonderful journey. We have so many dedicated people that are in our base camp community and just in our larger overall community uh, for two Indy. And we're just, we're just really grateful for that. Uh, it's just been really fun so far. And oh yeah. We're, we're and I think that stuff all the time. I think that we, the community community members benefit from your creativity and wanting to try new things all the time. Uh, that's what, you know, cause like we did a, we did the brand slam course uh on branding like where did that come from like wasn't expecting that to be within the community but it was it just was such a huge added value so we love the the new ideas that you're always bringing uh glad to hear it because well one of the things that sauna and i realized is that there's so many ways yes licensing is it can be a huge part some people could focus their entire attention as a music creator on that in terms of a real way to generate income that can support them, mm -hmm. uh, you know, but not everybody's journey looks like it's just focused on licensing. Like you're mm -hmm. a perfect example. You're killing it in licensing and you're also just crushing it with demo vocals. So it's like, there's many paths and so many. there's the path of the artist. There's the path of the singer. There's the path of the executive producer who gets all the people in the room. And, 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 you know, in terms of like mm -hmm. independent songwriters and producers and, and artists, they don't really think in those terms that I could be the person who brings everybody together. Yet that could be a totally yeah. valid and might be the best way to utilize your unique skill sets. And uh, that's one of the things that Sana and I love digging in with people on is just like totally. helping them discover their superpowers and um, talk about trajectory super changes too. Like I, I remember a couple of students, you know, who came in your course to, to learn how to become better sync songwriters ended up learning about music supervision and like formed their own music licensing companies like yeah. absolutely yeah so neat like you I said you that... had a story you wanted to share too, oh go ahead. Uh, go ahead about uh one of your students well I, I just really wanted to talk about cinder ernst because she's an amazing member of our community and it was it was just such a beautiful thing that happened and i I feel like this was maybe the most if if we had to pick like a most special situation that kind of has arisen Ever. over the last couple of years and and maybe even though it's on like a bucket list I have I have an ongoing kind of bucket list of like all my favorite life memories and and a couple of things that happened during this time are on that list uh but she's a beautiful wonderful person who's had a lifelong in a in a way like a very protracted uh battle with cancer and but she's a wonderful talented supportive beautiful human being and uh during the course of just the monthly base camp that we did i i think it got to a point where we realized uh, she wanted to record a bunch of stuff and she didn't really have the budget to do it and i don't know what possessed us to do this but we were just like let's throw together a uh let's just see what happens if we throw together a, a gofundme for her uh, so we as we took it upon ourselves to create a GoFundMe account for her to help her because she was writing so many new songs. And part if of it I can had interject to do with, for a second. Yeah, yeah, sure. So she had gotten some pretty devastating news and she had needed to do radiation on her head, her face, and was afraid she would not be able to sing again. And so there was a time length of I need to record these songs. I need to get them out of me. It's going to cost a certain amount of money you know, what do we do here? And yeah. so there was this heaviness of like, what's going to happen to my voice when I get radiation on my voice and I need to, I need to leave these songs in the world. And so then the GoFundMe comes out and you can carry it on from there. Yeah, no, that was great because it's it, sometimes I have a hard time with the timeline, like remembering specifics. So that was perfect. You're, you're such a great teammate. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the assist. It was so, an important detail. <laughs> no, it's a very important detail. So uh, yeah, around that time, we were, Sana and I were just thinking, you know, is there some way that we can support her in this? And and we just popped into my head. It's like, let's, let's throw a GoFundMe up and and see if we can get the whole community to in a way help help support this uh this important thing that needs to be done because how scary is how terrifying is that like you radiating your face like mm -hmm. am i going to be able to sing again like it's just it, it was just it, it makes me like tear up just like talking about it it's like it's it's very serious stuff. So we threw that up there, got it up. Uh, and I think it was, and I don't remember the specifics on this, but I think it was something crazy. Like in like three or four days, it got over $10,000. 
Yeah. Uh, so the community I think we over asked delivered. For, we asked for six and there was fourteen thousand yeah, dollars yeah. that it ended yeah. up being and in about three days. It was and that's crazy. the effect of Cinder. That's because there's <laughs> yes. no person that's untouched yeah. by her love and joy. And they saw an opportunity to give back to her and what she creates. And the the money and love just poured in. And then within a week, we were in the studio with Billy Leffler in Los Angeles. You were there. We we all came and the music yeah. was we, people traveled from all around the country to, come and wide. to this re- recording session. It was it was so special in LA. Yeah. And and it, and, I mean, and it caused a feedback and because all that love that poured into Cinder went into that music. And now that music is out there for the rest of the world to feel that love. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. And she does so much work with different cancer uh, advocacy organizations. Mm-hmm. And it's just been a, a real great thing for her to uh, to have these songs and be able to 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 share them with that those communities that she's a part of. And and she's just such a ongoing spark and inspiration for everybody uh we love her to death uh cinder if you're tuning in uh we love you and uh, hi cinder this just... is your formal invitation to come on the podcast oh, <laughs> all right <laughs> we would love to have that yeah i would i would put that up there too as not even just a, a success story but just yeah like you said one of those life memories that impact you so so deeply I mean, these and are the great, things that we're. She's also to let to keep in mind with Cinder, like she's been battling cancer. She's older. She's in, she's just coming. She just was like coming into her voice in a whole new way. Like mm-hmm. there's not a certain way that success looks. She has the placements. She had like one of her most successful years in placements last year. Like she's yeah. all of her songs are signed to agencies. She doesn't have a song that's not. She's got so many relationships going. Like she is just really showing up for what it is that she's supposed to do on this planet and give and you know the whole everybody here wants to support her and get her there but she's such an example of of what of how success can look many different ways in music and she's also it's it's an example of i mean it's really what sonnet and i with two indie set out to do which is to help we we believe that everybody out there everybody who's creative should be able to find a way that's fulfilling and and can help support them if that's what they want. They want to be able to make money off of their creativity. They want to feel fulfilled. They want to feel the sense of community, the recognition, the the growth that's possible. It's it's really what we're all about. So it's just it's I don't know. That's like again, it's it's just that's definitely like the peak in terms of you know licensing success. I would just mm-hmm. say like just success in general finding your way in this music industry can be so tough. It can be so lonely and uh, we don't have to do it alone. We can be a part of the family and uh, find our, find our community wherever we can find it, find the mentors that spark us up. Like, I mean, that's how I found my way is just by, Mm -hmm. Oh, that person has what I want. I better listen to what they have to say. I better get a little closer to the fire, you know, it's like, and lots of, Lots of very, very magical people gravitate towards you guys because that's what you are. How can we how can we join Two Indie if we haven't quite yet? Well, it's Two Indie, like Indie Rock. Uh, we're very easy to find. It's Two Indie Official on all the socials. And, Number uh, two. two in, Number yep, two. The, the numero two uh, dot com. And uh, it's pretty, pretty simple to find us. Like I said, on uh, all the social media sites, it's Two Indie Official. Official. And oh, official. check out uh, their podcast as well. The Music, the music Licensing Lic- Podcast. The Music Licensing <laughs> Podcast. Check them out. If you are interested in getting into sync licensing, you will 100% want to go listen to what they're sharing. And they and they share a lot more than just about sync licensing. So I definitely recommend. They've been mentors to me uh, over the years. And just I'm so grateful you were able to join us today on Singer Success Path Podcast. And yeah, thanks for there's probably us. so much more that I want to talk to you about. So maybe we'll maybe we'll have you on again in the future. But until then, stay inspired. And uh we'll see you back sometime soon. Sounds Thank great. You. Thank you. All right. All right, see ya. Hey, thanks again for watching. Real quick, if you could subscribe and like, that would be epic. Again, in the description below are links to some free resources, and I think you'll really like this video next.